Hey everyone, it's Johnny, your Independent Sensi Consultant. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are gonna be talking about some empties. A mountain of empties, it's a little bit crazy. Um, I have not gotten around to doing a fragrance feedback video in months now, I think. It's kind of disgusting. So I have a mountain, actually I actually have two mountains. I have a Sensi Mountain and a non-Sensi Mountain. <clears throat> so this is the non-sensi mountain of wax that we're going to talk about in this video and then the other video will be all the sensi empties that I have. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to just dive right in. They're in no particular order. I'm just going to grab one and go. So starting with uh, Carolina Candle Company Enchanting Lavender. So this is a brand that is distributed by the MVP group um, through Walmart stores, I believe. Um, and they are beautiful scents. Like I've tried some other ones in theirs, but I will say the China general rule of thumb with this brand is that they're very light or lighter throwing, even if you throw the whole bar into a room. Um, so for someone who is sensitive to fragrance or wants just a light sort of de fragrance in your room, this may be a great brand to take a look at. Um, they retail, I think around the same price as the traditional Walmart waxes. Um, and you get six cubes. They're a, I don't know if they're a soy blend or not. I don't remember. Does it say? Do you say? No, I think these are just like a regular wax blend, but, um, they, they do perform, but like I said, they're just, they're very light. So if you want something to smack you in the face, stay away from this brand. If you just want something light in the background, um, maybe just leave like a hint of scent. This is probably a better choice of a wax melt for you. Moving on, we have Sensational's Honeysuckle Nectar. I love this fragrance. This is one of my favorite honeysuckle fragrances that I've found, at least to date. Um, and it is a strong powerhouse, scent monster. Like you will not have any issues with this fragrance. Um, and that's what it is. It's really just honeysuckle. There's not a whole lot else to it. There's a fresh note to it, um, but it's the closest that I've found to more of a genuine honeysuckle. Um, I will say my mainstay is wild honeysuckle. Um, is probably my number one for like a true honeysuckle fragrance, but this is a, a definite, um, close second. So that is that one. I have quite a few of those stocked up because I just love this fragrance so much. Um, and like Scentsy, they can't, um, you can't put them into a club. So next we have Colonial Candle Manly, Manly Indulgences Black Pine and Oak Moss. So once upon a daydream, when I finally got rid of uh, my candles, my jar candles, I actually melted them down. You can do that using a double boiler method on your stove and turn them into wax melts if you want. It does get a little bit messy, so just be mindful if you're going to take that route versus just like a candle warmer. Um, but this is a great fragrance. It's definitely, you definitely get the pine notes. You definitely get that mossy, earthy note, but it's a more subtle, it's not like a smack in your face sort of pine. It's definitely more of almost um, cologne adjacent, which I really appreciate. And it's a sort of softer pine scent, which is really nice because a lot of times tree scents tend to be very like, hello, it's Christmas or hello, the forest is attacking your face. And this doesn't do that. So I have a couple more of those melts that I made that I have to get through, but it is available. I believe that's through uh, Manly Indulgences is through, um, oh gosh, is that through Goose Creek? I want to say it is, but I could be wrong. No, it's not. It's through some other company. I can't remember. I mean, it's probably, if I had to think about this, Colonial Candle. Duh. Sometimes, sometimes we just don't add two and two together. Better Homes and Gardens Tropical Pina Colada is next, though. This is definitely what it sounds like. You do feel like it just, it turns your room into a pina colada. And if you love that fragrance, this is pretty good. I still think I like, um... Sensi's Pina Colada Cha-Cha a little bit better. I feel like it does a better balanced blend and you get more of the white rum note in that. Um, whereas this one is definitely more on the sweeter side and more of like the Pina Colada mix without any sort of real detectable notes of rum. So slight difference, but this is definitely a little bit sweeter than the Sensi one. So if you want something that's a little bit more balanced, I would check that one out. But that is a Pina Colada. Next, we have Mainstay's Alpine Forest. This is a lovely forest scent. Um, it kind of reminds me of not quite as burnt of a, um, I can't remember if it's Sensationals. I think it's Sensationals, or is it Better Homes and Gardens? Fragrant Woodland Walk. That's the name of the scent. Um, this is a little bit more authentic. It's a little bit less burnt, and it has a little bit less of like the dried leaves undertone. This is more of just like the forest 
walking through the forest. Um, it's almost similar to um, Scentsy's Rustic Lodge with a little bit less of a complexity to the fragrance. So it is a great scent um, and it does perform well even though it's mainstay. So they're like the tiny little wax cubes, but they perform well. Just remember if you're doing mainstays, it tends to be um, two mainstays cubes tends to equal most other brands approximate one cube of wax. All right, moving on. We have Sensationals Bali Babe. And this fragrance has an aura of like fresh ozone marine to it. It has a little bit of a tropical uplifting vibe, but it's so soft and so forgettable. It's like spa meets the tropics, um, but it's not really good at either of those two scent notes. It's just kind of like a nice, like I, I would like to call this like elevator music scent. That's what I think what I'm gonna call these from now on. Um, but it's 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 like there and you're kind of aware that it's there, but it's not like you can point out any specific notes to it. It just kind of feels kind of clean and fresh and unintrusive. So if that's the kind of scent you're looking for, maybe if I try to find this one, I don't know if they still make it anymore, but um, it was just kind of forgettable, like compared to a lot of other scents. Um, not that every scent I need just has to be like this groundbreaking landmark scent, but you, you think of some scents and they just kind of like go, wait, what was I warming? I don't remember what it smelled like. And this is kind of what that does, uh, even though it is a fairly decent performer. It's like a good medium performer throughout the day, but if you don't really get anything out of it, it's like, why are you warming it? So moving on, we have Darcy and David. This is the uh, Hobby Lobby brand, Italian bergamot and sandalwood. I have a few more of theirs splattered throughout my massive amounts of wax. So I'm trying to get through some of them. This is Italian bergamot, sandalwood, and rosewood. Um, this is a weird like bergamot rose with an undertone of like maybe woods. Um, it, it didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Um, I thought I would like this a lot more because I'm cold. I was like, wow, this is going to smell really good. This is, that's probably why I waited so long because I wanted to wait so I could actually warm it. And I was just kind of oh, underwhelmed by it. I feel like the bergamot kind of takes center stage in this rather than sandalwood, which is surprising because I usually think sandalwood is a stronger performer. Um, and the rosewood just kind of adds a weird sweetness. Um, and I'm not entirely certain it's rose wood. I feel it's like rose plus wood rather than rose wood. It, it's, it's, I definitely smell rose and it's like that powdery rose. Yeah, not a, not a huge fan of that one. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, high expectations fell flat. So, however, one that did not disappoint actually was this Yankee Candle. And for those of you who've been around my channel for a while, you know that I have a love-hate relationship with Yankee Candles, specifically their wax melts. For a while, they just all kind of smelled like they had a weird chemical or burnt or something wrong off note to them. This one, aside from being a pain in the behind to get out of your wax warmers once it's like done, if you're doing it when it's cold, um, this scent is phenomenal. Oh my God, I can't get enough of this scent. Um, it lasts forever. This is this is so similar to Sensi's Cozy Cardigan without the sort of underlying rose tone. Like it's so similar, but it's like if if I had to give like one a touch of femininity and one a touch of masculinity, Cozy Cardigan has a hint of femininity with that blush rose, just, just, just so subtle. And this one is more of a warm, um, slightly more woody um, version of that. So. They're, they're so similar though. I love this fragrance. Oh my God. And it lasts forever. It lasted like a couple days per cube. Like, and it's a good performer. Like I had no problem smelling it. Like kudos to you Yankee, because I've not been pretty impressed with any of your scents, including ones that I thought I would love. And this one really just knocked my socks off. So if you get a chance to warm this one, highly recommend it. Um, Otherwise, I feel like their stuff is a little bit hit or miss. Although maybe they're, they've changed their formula. Who knows? Next we have Sensational Swiss Summit. This is... Oh, yeah. This smells like ivy and mossy. And it's very green. It kind of gives me a green soapy vibe. But then it's also like like a air freshener. So it's like green 
Lush air freshener. And it sounds like, oh, that might sound pretty good. It, it doesn't come off that way. It's almost kind of like a stale Febreze scent with an extra green note in it. Um, I was slightly disappointed with this one. Um, can't say that I would ever wear this one again. It wasn't like vomit inducing or anything like that, but I was definitely unimpressed and leaning towards the like, hmm, maybe I should switch out this to something else. And I was like, well, it's not that bad. So, um, I can't personally recommend this, but it is a fresh sort of earthen scent. <laughs> Again, I guess we could call that an elevator music scent, although that did perform decently too. All right, next we have Celeste from Sensationals. This is citrus, coconut, and vanilla. Um, I don't remember exactly smelling like mountains of citrus with this one, but the creamy coconut vanilla notes definitely come out of this. I almost would consider this like a, a romantic kind of scent, if that makes sense. It's a little bit perfumey. It's not powdery per se. It's more of that warm, perfumey vanilla versus like a bakery vanilla or something like that. It's soft, it's mellow, and it does perform well. I remember that. I was actually pleasantly surprised with this one. Um, I don't think I had very good expectations of this one, and I was, I was pleasantly surprised. So this one I would get again. They do categorize this as a floral scent, um, which is kind of ironic because the three main notes are not florals, but I guess vanilla is like the floral vanilla, so we'll go with that. And yeah, it is a lighter sort of fresh scent, um, and I enjoyed it. It's a nice warm, cozy scent too, so. All right, moving on. I have so many to go through. It's gonna be like a video for 10 years if I go at this rate. Hazelnut and cream, this is a limited edition. I picked up a bunch of these. You get hazelnut, you get this creamy richness. It's not super vanilla, it's not super coconut or anything like that. Um, it's really nice and it's a great, like, year-round, anytime, just you want a nice, cozy sort of scent in your home that's not overwhelming and that most people will be um, fine with smelling. Um, I know it shows like a latte or a hot chocolate or something there. I don't know if I would go that far. Um, there's a hint of like a spice in there, a hint. Obviously it kind of balances out the hazelnut. I would say there's like maybe a, a pinch of like bakery cinnamon in here, but it's subtle enough that you're not gonna just be like, oh my God, it's bakery cinnamon everywhere. And I really enjoyed this one. Um, I have a bunch of these. These are for like, if I don't know what to warm and I just want like a neutral scent, this is what I kind of go for. And it performs well, lasts forever. Um, and that's kind of why I love it. Next we have holiday edition cookies for Santa. See, I have all my like holiday ones that I went through. Um, I feel like this is more of cookies rather than milk and cookies. Um, I also feel like it's a dry cookie. It's not like a nice, moist, chewy, buttery, gooey, whatever cookie. So these are like the crispy cookies. Like if you like to have a cookie that has a nice crunch to it, that's kind of more what you get out of this rather than necessarily like a chewy, ooey, gooey chocolate chip or something. Um, that being said, I feel like it's more baking spice meets cookie versus like straight up cookie. And I'm not exactly sure what cookie I would even call this. Um, probably closer to a gingerbread or a molasses or somewhere in between rather than like a chocolate chip cookie for Santa, which is what I usually think of. So, um, it's okay. I don't really like love the scent. Um, I have a few more of those, I think, or I gave them away. I don't remember, but I don't mind warming it. It just, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. All right, next, moving on, we have Evergreen Apple Wreath. This is what it sounds like. It's a green sort of evergreen um, with an apple overtone. This is kind of similar in vain um, to Sensi's Icicles and Evergreen, uh, if you remember that scent. Uh, it doesn't have the weird, I don't even know how to describe it, burnt, barky, uh, weird tone to um, the end of it, like the one that Sensi has is, I don't know. The formula is different, so it doesn't doesn't do the same thing. You get more of the apple too with this um, than the evergreen and the icicle or whatever's happening in the other one. Um, it's not quite as minty or icy in that sense, so that's probably helping the situation. Um, but, but, but it's apples and green tree at the end of the day. That's really what it is. That's the main staple. It's a pretty solid scent. I do enjoy it. Um, 
And I think I have one or two more of those for next holiday season. But after that, I'm not going to like hunt myself down to find them. All right. Next we have sugar cookie and buttercream. This is from Better Homes and Gardens. Um, it does kind of give me a little bit of, uh, if you mix vanilla bean buttercream and sugar cookie from Scentsy, you get something in between this. This ends to be a little bit more on the buttery side, but it's not so far gone that it smells like buttered popcorn or something like that. Like, it's definitely a more manageable sugar cookie and buttercream scent, but I would say overall this kind of is more like a vanilla bakery scent than it is anything else. Like, I don't know that I would necessarily be like, oh my gosh, I smell sugar cookies. I mean, again, I think I've mentioned this in a video before with our Bring Back My Bar. A lot of times if you give a name to a scent, even before you smell it, you have a preconceived notion of what you think it's going to smell like or you want it to smell like. So that can often sometimes be misleading from what the actual scent really is. So if, if forever you are like, oh, I wonder what this is going to smell like, and you don't want to have a biased opinion on it, like just go to like a wax aisle or something and just open every single one. And who cares what the name is? Just go in there, just be like, oh, blue wax number four on the shelf. Let's see what that one smells like. I think it smells like this. What do they say it smells like? Yes or no, or maybe in the middle, or maybe you love it more or less. Who knows? Anyways. Next we have Rio de, de Janeiro Sun. De Janeiro? Rio de, de Janeiro. Um, this is a nice warm citrus scent from what I remember. I liked it. I wouldn't say that I'm like super in love with it, but it kind of lends it to the picture there. Like you get that orange sort of sunrise and it's kind of like a nice way to start your day. I remember it being like a kind of energizing, um, citrusy scent, um, not terribly pungent, which is nice and not bitter. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything like negative or positive. Oh, that's not true. I have some positives. I don't have anything like particularly negative to say about it. It was just a nice scent. Um, all right, Rose and Sandalwood from Better Homes and Gardens. So this one is Clove, Sandalwood, Jasmine, Rose, Sweet Pea, Mandarin Leaf, and probably some more stuff. This is a whole lot of stuff going on in here, and I'm not entirely certain I like it. Um, you do get sandalwood. The clove throws me off a little bit. You do get that. It's like that weird spice note that didn't necessarily need to be there. But then you do get like this floral blend. So I don't know. I guess sweet pea is in there. Sweet pea rose, and then you get jasmine. Now, I like jasmine. I like just plain, straight up jasmine scents, usually. i not a big fan of rose, not a huge fan of sweet pea, and they definitely get the sweet pea. I feel like that's the dominant floral, followed by rose. And then Jasmine's just kind of like, ah, eh, peace out. I'm going to go hang out with Aladdin. Um, Mandarin Leaf. There is a weird sort of green-ish note to this. I don't know. It just, it throws me off. Something about it just is weird. It smells kind of um, like ladies powder room um, vibe. It's a little bit potpourri-esque. Um, and I think that's why I'm just not super fond of it. it like it got spice note and, and the woodsy undertone with that sort of powdery floral gives me potpourri. But if you like a sort of potpourri sort of vibe, this is definitely something to try. Oh my God, I feel like I haven't even touched any of the things in here. All right, let's go a little faster. Red Shed Wax. So I got a really cool Christmas tree wax warmer. It looks like a ceramic Christmas tree from Red Shed Tractor Company. And they had, uh, it came with a wax melt of gingerbread. I'm not a huge gingerbread person in terms of warming. Um, this is warm cinnamon and fresh ginger with hints of sweet molasses and brown sugar. And honestly, that's what this was. It actually was pretty authentic. It was about a medium, maybe a medium soft performer in like my open area. But it did last and you could smell it without it being like overwhelming in your nostrils. Um, I would be curious to try some of their other waxes down the road. But just based on that first one, which I had no expectation for, um, I was fairly impressed with how it performed. So... I don't know how much this costs because it came for free with my warmer when I bought it, but um, I would be curious to see what the other ones um, in their company smell like. Next, we have Espresso Cake Pop from Goose Creek. Uh, again, this is just like my never-ending gripe with a lot of coffee-based scents. You get coffee. This one obviously has chocolate sort of noted in here, but this is more of a sweet bakery scent or a sweet coffee-tinged scent rather than a coffee scent. 
Um, and that really annoys me a little bit just because when I want a coffee fragrance, I want to smell coffee. I want it to smell like a barista just brewed me coffee, not they just baked me a cake and then gave me a cup of coffee with it. Like that's not what I want. And that's kind of what this is. It's almost like an iced chocolate cake pop um, with a hint of coffee on the back side of it. But it's more chocolate and bakery than it is espresso. So be mindful of that. Um, if you want to, the only two good coffee scents that I've smelled so far, that doesn't mean there's more out there or not, um, but Darcy and David's, um, Kona coffee scent is like a gr amazing just coffee scent. And then Sensi's coffee tree, if you can find it, I think is probably out of the ones that I've smelled with them as of late. It's probably the most authentic, just coffee sort of scent that we have that I've, that I'm aware of. So there is that. Uh, moving on, Better Homes and Gardens, Apple and Cedarwood. It's, you get a, a fresh apple scent. It's not quite a juicy apple. You do get a woodsy sort of note. This reminds me um, a little of Scentsy's Blonde Wood and Moonflower, if that makes sense. There is kind of like a, it's not a floral tone, but there's like a musk tone to this that paired with the apple and then a couple different wood tones kind of gives that like sheer woods adjacent but more like blonde wood and moonflower sort of feel. Um, it's a lighter woody floral slightly sweet sort of scent. Um, I didn't mind it but I wasn't like oh my gosh I need to have more of this. Texas. This is I think this is yeah a uh, fusion wax special edition South Padre Beach. Yeah, this is forgettable. It kind of smells like weird, semi-flat fizzy soda, but like fresh fizzy soda. That's weird. I was, this is, this is an elevator music or elevator wax sort of scent where it's like, I kind of basically forgot its existence and that's probably for the better. So I wouldn't go and look for that. If you want to smell what South Padre Beach smells like, just go to the beach, take a trip, take a vacation. That doesn't do it. All right, next we have Mandarin Blossom from Fusion. And I didn't mind this, but it is a little bit strong. It is somewhat powdery. It's like a citrusy floral powder note. Um, this would be great in like a, a powder room or maybe a bathroom or possibly even a bedroom. It's not as fresh or clean as I would like it to be. It's, it's just a little too powdery for me, but... It is a decent performer. I will give it that. Next is Cran Cranberry Mandarin Splash from Better Homes and Gardens. This is what you'd expect. It's like a tart cranberry meets a vibrant burst of like a not quite sunny delight citrus. And then there's still like a hint of tart bitterness at the end. And I don't know if that's the cranberry coming back into play or it's that mixed, the two mixed together without any added like sponge sugar notes. But it is on the more tart side of citrusy, citrusy, fruity. So if you like that, this is one to maybe look out for in future. And it performs pretty decently. Next, we have the Joshua Tree Desert. This is another um, Fusion Wax Sensational brand. Um, again, this is kind of like elevator music. It is. It does have that sort of sandy, earthy vibe to it. Not quite dirt note, but like that sort of dryness that you might expect. And then there's a hint of like a dewy note, like almost like an agave cactus or something. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's not, it's again, it's like an elevator wax. It doesn't really do anything magnificent, but it also isn't terrible either. So next we have Sandalwood Cedar from Fusion Wax. Oh my goodness. And I like this one. Um, I feel like it, the sandalwood does vie for dominance in this, and I would have liked the cedar to be a little bit more of the forerunner, but you do get a good chunk of both wood scents in here. Um, yeah, you do definitely you get, get more sandalwood on top of it, but it's definitely a woody note. It's um, It kind of reminds me a little bit of, and again, it's not this, and it's not 
anywhere as heavy, but it's like a very lighter version of um, Scentsy's African Mahogany, where that's just like a heavy, rich wood scent and nothing else. This is like a lighter, more airy version of that because it's different types of woods, obviously. Um, but you do, you do feel like it's just like woodland. So if you like just, just wood sort of scents, this one's pretty, pretty just woods and nothing more. All right. <clears throat> Next, let's do Darcy and David's Madagascar Vanilla and Cedar. So we're on a cedar kick, I guess. And I actually really like this one. You do get like a creamy warmth from the vanilla bean, but it's not like overwhelming or rich or nauseating. And you do get the cedar note. It could be kind of a, considered a romantic scent. It's definitely a woodsy scent. Maybe you could even say it's cologne adjacent because it's the cedar note in there. I would wear it as a cologne. But this this definitely holds true to what I was hoping it would smell like. And it like it said, Madagascar vanilla and cedar wood. I think they did a really good job with this one. And I will say some of their some of their waxes are like spot on. Some of them I don't know what they were thinking, but again, scent profiles are also personal preference to a strong degree. So just because I love something, you might hate cedar and vanilla. So or just vanilla or just cedar. Or all of the above. All right, but that was a good performer. I remember really enjoying that one, so that would be one I'd probably pick up again. All right, let's see. Next, we have Better Homes and Gardens Roasted Chestnut and Acorns. This is... This is the same weird thing that I have going on with um, Toasted Acorn and Oak from Scentsy. There's, like, that weird... I guess it's the acorn note, but it almost smells like a really weird, sweet popcorn nut, if that makes any sort of sense. Like, it's almost corn adjacent in like sweetness, but it's still nutty based because it's an acorn, not a popcorn or a corn kernel. It has like a warm sort of golden tone to this too. And it's the sweetness that just throws it off a little bit for me. So I don't know, I guess I, this for me, it's just, I'm not an acorn or toasted acorn or any sort of acorn sort of note person. Um, you do get a little bit of the chestnut in here, but I feel like acorn is the bigger sort of scent note. And this one actually says fire roasted chestnut, acorn, gingered pumpkin, hickory, maple, and tonka. So they're adding sweetness on top of it to kind of balance out just the one note. And I think this is a sweeter scent than the Scentsy one. Do I like this better or worse? Mm, I don't think I really like either of them that, that much. So there's that, but it does perform been fairly impressed with the performance. Warm to bar of Sensational's Perfect Day. This is probably the closest, well, I mean, it's been a while, but this is one of the closest ones you can get to Scentsy's old picked for you. That was a Mother's Day fragrance, which was more honeydew and juicy and dewy. This one's a little bit more like fresh air and less juicy aquatic. Um, so I do like the Scentsy one much better than this one, but it is still a good contender if you don't, don't have access to that bar anymore. Um, but it's nice. It's fresh. There's a sweetness to it. Um, you get a little bit of, well, you get a lot of bit of florals in this one. Um, but you get that warmth of the sun. Like they call it sun drenched blooms. I don't know exactly what the scent note is, but it works really nicely. All right, moving on. Machu Picchu ruins. Oh, this is a hundred percent elevator music, elevator wax. Um, this is a little bit like a stuffy office boardroom. That's what I get out of this. It's like, it's not quite the same as like the Dia de los Muertos wax, um, Recuerdas or whatever it was called. Uh, there was one that was similar that was like family photographs or something like that. And it has the same sort of weird, stuffy, like, like dusty room sort of feel or musty room. Like a room that hasn't been opened in a while. It still has the cobwebs and little layered dust everywhere and stuff. Like, that's what I get out of this. And I mean, it is, to be fair, called like the Machu Picchu ruins. So I wouldn't expect it to smell like grapefruit or something, but... Maybe I don't necessarily need my house to smell like an Egyptian crypt, or in this case, like something from the Andes Mountains, you know, like, maybe not. Actually, well, yeah, no. Okay. 
Andes Mountains. Is it the Andes Mountains? Did I just make that up? Now I'm kind of curious. I know it's up in the mountains, but we'll just say it up in the mountains of Machu Picchu and call it that because that will at least be accurate. All right. Odor eliminating soy blend, wax melt, vanilla bean. That's a mouthful. This is from Candle Warmers, etc. I believe is the brand. Um, this is a good vanilla scent. I mean, there's, I had no, no gripes about it. It's a soy blend wax, um, performed just fine. It wasn't anything to write home about, but it was a pretty, pretty spot on vanilla bean, which was nice. It wasn't trying to be a different type of vanilla. Um, just very one dimensional. So if you just want a simple one dimensional fragrance, this worked just fine. I don't know about the, um, the odor eliminating part of this. I mean, I feel like in general, when you put another fragrance in the room, it's going to somewhat mask or cover up the other fragrances that are going on. But I don't know that this is necessarily like it has molecules that attack the odor causing mac molecules in the air and gropes around them and does all that. Like, I don't know if it does that. I don't think it's for Fe Febreze, but it was a good vanilla scent. All right, Better Homes and Gardens Lavender Lemonade. This is a scent that I'm slowly starting to not like as much as I used to. It is a lemonade scent. It's not a sweet lemonade. So I think that's what you have to be aware of. And then it's like a slightly herbaceous floral lavender. So this is not like a cloyingly sweet squeeze the day sort of fragrance from Scentsy where you get like lemon and sugar for all day long. This is like bitter lemon in water, probably with a bit of sugar, but more herbal lavender happening. So if you like more of a tart lemon scent, this is probably going to be something that you're going to really enjoy. If you want a cloyingly sweet lemon, like a sorbet or something like that, don't, don't get this one. It's, it's going to be too bitter for you, but it performs well. You may even look at something like this one. Our next one, Meyer Lemon Basil. This is a very simple, clean, Scent. Meyer lemon is not a very powerful, punchy lemon. I mean, unless you get like a Meyer lemon cleaner and then maybe, but in this, it's a very soft lemon and it doesn't really scream lemon when you walk in this room. It just kind of clears out the fragrance and the odor in the room that paired with the basil. So it's more of like a scent nullifier fragrance than it is necessarily a smack you in the face with lemons and basil scent. Uh, I'm sure those exist as well. This is not one of them. This is this is kind of one where I'm like, there's too much going on. I just need a clean palette in my apartment. And this doesn't. All right, let's move on. We're not even like halfway into this bag. This is ridiculous. Let's move on for, we might have to turn this into like a couple parts if this keeps up. Um, back to Carolina Candle Company, Red Oak. This is a beautiful red oak scent. They're very good with their like one or two note scents. Beautiful scent, but very soft for a woodsy scent, especially cedar. Like, usually cedar is a pretty um, prominent fragrance note. And this one, again, very light. Nice. Very nice. I loved the red oak sort of cedar scent thing going on. I think it was like a blend, I would say. Yeah, I feel like there's there I, there's got to be like a hint of cedar in there. At least, maybe, I think. I Maybe I want it to be cedar in there, too, because it's red in the front. But it's just, overall, it's just a soft, woody scent. And that's very unusual because woody scents don't tend to be softer performing. They tend to be the stronger ones. So there's that. Um, next, we have Cashmere Mahogany from Mainstays. This one, I think I liked it in essence more than I liked it in practicality. Like I warmed it and I was like, okay, I get the mahogany note. I got like the sort of cozy vibe note, but it was a little bit less inviting than I would have wanted to have, if that makes sense. It, it almost gives me, like the more I'm smelling it, it almost gives me like a subtle root beer undertone, like a loot root beer anise sort of like, earthenness to it, medicinal quality. And maybe that's what was throwing it off. Like I wasn't getting straight up mahogany. I was kind of getting like cashmere or root beer. Like the more I'm smelling it, the more I smell root beer. I'm like, oh my God, it's root beer. Um, yeah, I just was, I, 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 they describe it as wood, amber, and vanilla. You know what it is? It's probably the amber. It's probably the amber is kind of playing with my head and messing with like the woody tone and making it a sweeter. So it turns into like that root beer note. So 
I wasn't super fond of it as much as I love cashmere scents and I love mahogany scents. This is kind of a miss. Next, we have Simple Romance. Uh, this is a vanilla sandalwood, I believe, from Sensationals. Yes, that's basically all it is. It's like a more deeply undertoned um, satin sheets. So if you like satin sheets from Scentsy, this is more of the woodsy tone, and it's a deeper woods note than the sandalwood that is in the other one. But it is a very simple fragrance, and it works. It's a strong performer, but it's not particularly multi-dimensional, so just be aware of that. Next, we have Better Homes and Gardens, Blue Spruce and Tinsel. And I really like this. This is a strong, but it's, I, I like the blend. I feel like I like this better than Very Snowy Spruce. I feel like it's a lighter, brighter spruce um, sort of fragrance. And there's almost like a freshness to this that I wish the Scentsy one had for Very Snowy Spruce. Like that one just feels very heavy by the end of warming it. Whereas this one, while strong and in your face, you don't feel like that same heaviness or depth to the fragrance in a good way. Um, and it is a great performer, as most tree scents are. We can do this. We can do this. We're going to hustle through these. We're going to try. Sensational's Rain. Did it smell like rain? Honestly, a little bit. It is kind of an aquatic, fresh note, and that's just about all it is. It is a little bit, like, leaning towards, like, a clean scent more than... And I mean, like, in a, as, like, a cleaner rather than, like, clean as in fresh and clean. Like, more of, like, a generic, simple, um, unfragranced house cleaner. It has, like, that sort of hint of soapiness or citrus in there. I wonder if it's a bergamot note. Anyways, it is a fresh scent. It's a lighter scent. I didn't mind it, but again, like, I could, you know, go after you and be like, oh my gosh, it smells like fresh rain. It's like, it smells like fresh and clean wateriness. All right, next we have the Shawl El Roboso. Um, this is a fresh scent from Sensationals. And I didn't really like this one. It is a very like house cleaning scent. Like I went around the house with lemon cleaner or citrus cleaner or something. And that's just lingering through the house and everything's fresh and clean. Like, it's not bad scent, but like, I feel like there are many better scents to play with. Citrus candy, or oh, citrus candy. Candy cane and citrus from Better Homes and Gardens is the next one. And this one, I'm going to be very honest with you. This smells like a slightly citrus version of um, Sensational's uh, Peppermint candy cane, I want to say. That's not what it's called. Something. I have a scent that I can't for the life of me remember. Marshmallow candy cane. Marshmallow peppermint candy cane. I don't know why I can't remember the name right now, but that's okay. Um, it, it kind of gives me that vibe, but with the citrus hint. And I'm not sure that I just particularly like that sort of citrus um, note in it. I actually feel like it makes me like this less than if it was just a traditional sort of peppermint candy cane vanilla sort of vibe. But that's personal preference. I still liked it. Just what didn't like it quite as much as the one that I liked before. I think it is marshmallow candy cane. Anyways, sea, sea glass from Goose Creek is next. This is um, elevator wax music. I'm not even waste time on this one. I would not recommend this. Um, and there's a lot of sea glass scents out there, so it's, I don't think it's particularly unique either. Now this one, Dia de los Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead. That is the actual name of this wax, not just it's for Day of the Dead. It's a woodsy cologne scent, and and that's really what it is. It's it kind of gives me a little bit of like a cross between Mystery Man and My Hero from Sensi. But it's like that woodsy, masculine cologne scent with probably a little fresh zing, which could maybe be bergamot, but highly unlikely. It's a little too dark to be bergamot. But there is a warmth to this scent, so it's, it's quite nice. It's a nice cologne scent. We'll leave it at that. All right. Next, we have a big one. Sensational's Autumn Air. I love this fragrance. I wish... 
I wish we had something very similar to this in Scentsy. We have some things that come close, but nothing quite compares to this one. And this is probably, if I had to say it, this is probably like one of my all-time favorite fall scents. Um, because it's what, really what it is. It smells like fresh air. It smells like you smell the leaves changing color, but they're not like dried, crinkled up leaves on the ground, like all earthy and gross. This is a very light, fresh autumnal, like you're taking a big breath as you're walking down the street as the leaves are changing and the wind's blowing and the sun's out and, you, and you're wearing a sweater, you know, it's not that cold yet. Gorgeous scent. Love it. I will be very sad when I run out of cubes of that. <clears throat> Next, we have Better Homes and Gardens, Peony and Pansies. Peonies and Pansies? And this is a nice floral. Um, I like it. It's a softer floral. It's um, a little bit forgettable, but it's a nice soft floral for spring. Um, the notes are daffodil, violet petals, pink peony, tulip, lemon, and verdant greens. So... It is a slight floral scent with a little bit of like a lemony clean note to it, if that makes sense. So it's not a heavy floral. It's not a powdery floral. It's not smack you in the face and flip you upside down floral. It's a very subtle background scent. So if you're looking for something to just kind of like air out your space rather than smack it with spring floral fragrances, um, this would be a really good one to try. Um, like I said, it's lighter then I would prefer, but it kind of almost works in its favor. All right, moving right along. We're getting, we're getting down here a little bit. All right, let's do some of these destination wax ones. Coconut cream pie. Sweet and creamy coconut cream pie. I mean, that's what it is. And it smells good. It smells like coconut cream more than it does pie, um, which I'm not mad about because I don't really need a bakery in my apartment at all times. Um, I will say that for being, I think they're like a, either a blend or a more of a soy based wax. Um, they perform really well. And these are pretty old little, um, things they are about like three, maybe four. I would say like three and a half Scentsy cubes are in like one of these. Um, they perform pretty well for, um, being poured. When were these poured? In 2020. So, they, they've held on to their fragrance pretty well. And they don't, they haven't like leaked or anything like that. So again, I, kudos to Destination Wax. You made a pretty solid product that lasts over time. Um, which apparently is a common issue with soy based waxes. So coconut cream pie. Next we have lavender coconut. Oops. And this is a very um, discernible lavender scent. Um, I would say... It's a little bit more floral than it is herbal or medicinal, but it's, yeah, French lavender blossoms. Ha 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 ha. See, look at me. Coconut, coconut blossoms, and cedar. There is a cedar note to this. It actually is interesting. Cedar works surprisingly well as an undertone to lavender, and I would not have thought that. Um, but it, it really rounds out and adds a depth to an otherwise kind of like sort of higher end or mid-tone sort of floral that lavender tends to be in my experience. Um, as for the coconut parts of this, um, it's not like a creamy, like heavy coconut. It's more of like a light floral. Um, so it, it kind of balances out the, the heaviness that lavender tends to have when you put a lot in there. All right. We also have vanilla birch. This is a Bath and Body Works type, white birch, Madagascar, vanilla, and sandalwood. This was nice. You do get the birch tones to this one. Um, it was just really light. That was my biggest gripe. Like, it wasn't that it didn't perform, it didn't last. It was just lighter than I was hoping it would be. So, but it was a really nice scent. Um, Beach Nights, Marshmallow, Bonfire. So this is, this is kind of, um... If you like Scentsy's Bonfire Beach, if you like marshmallow fireside sort of things, that's kind of what this is. But this is not a smoky one. So if you do not like the smoke tones in something like Bonfire Beach, this doesn't really have those. It's like the bonfire minus the smoke. So I don't even know how you get that to happen, but it's like you get that slightly burnt woodsy note, but you don't get the smoky component to that note. 
It kind of reminds me of um, Bath and Body Works Fireside Flurries, if you remember that fragrance, where it's not really smoky. It's more of that marshmallowy vanilla bonfire. It's, it's a good scent. I really like this one. All right, Blue Sugar from Destination Wax. Cotton Candy, Vanilla, Tonka Bean, um, Star Anise, Cedar, Patchouli, Coriander, Orange, Bergamot, and Musk. There's a whole lot going on here. I wasn't fond of this scent. It does give that like sort of sugary note to it. I think this is supposed to be like a um, like a type scent or something, but I could be just making that up. I don't know. I, I'm not particularly fond of it. It would, didn't do anything for me. Um, it is kind of like a slight fresh bakery overtone, but it's like, it's just like the sugary tones to it. Um, yeah, I wasn't impressed with this one, but that's more of a, I just didn't really like the scent profile more than did perform well or not. Like again, their stuff does perform well overall. Next destination wax rumor has it Amber sandalwood galban galbanum. Oh gosh. Balsam of Peru and gorgeous smoky vanilla. So this is kind of a, it is a smoky vanilla scent at the end of the day. It's, it's a beautiful scent. It's more on the masculine side. You definitely get a good dose of smokiness though. So if you're not a smoky sort of person, even though the woodsy tones are nice to this, I would avoid this one because you do get a nice dose of like that smoky um, sort of permeate, permeation in the room. <clears throat> but again, performed really well. Then I had, oh gosh, I remember this, Egyptian Dragon. So this is um, exotic blend of dragon's blood and jasmine. This is a very like incense, spicy sort of scent. And I don't mean like, again, not bakery, incense spice scent. And it is great and it's strong. And if you don't burn incense, um, this can probably surprise you because it will make you feel like you're burning incense. Like it doesn't, it has that heaviness without the smoky tones that incense kind of tends to do in your room because you're burning something. Um, I don't know how they did it, but it smells just like it. And it, it's like the alternative to actually burning incense. All right, coconut leaves, fruit, floral, coconut blend, coconut, tangerine, papaya, jasmine, palm leaves, and vanilla inspired by Bath and Body Works. So again, this one, um, this one was just okay for me. I feel like it was too green and too, um, sweet fruity or sweet um citrus for my own particular preference it was kind of like i don't know what i was expecting this to be i i but but i think the papaya and the tangerine was just a little bit too much and then you have like the green palm sort of vibe um and i just it just doesn't work for me um it performed just fine but i was not like wild about it. All right, next we have sugared amber and plum. This one is what it sounds like: ripe plum, sugar, sugared amber, cashmere musk, and a spike of candied citron. And this just reminds me of uh, it. It gives me a little bit of vanilla blackberry from Scentsy, but it also gives me dancing sugar plums minus the sugar and spice thing, just like more of the sugar plum note. Um, this also, honestly, what this reminds me of now that I'm thinking about it is um, the Plum and White Woods fragrance from Scentsy. Um, it's not quite as woody as that, but it is very much along that same um, vein. And I love that scent. Oh my God, it's like my kryptonite. Yes, that is very much like Plum and White Woods. All right couple more of these and then we have a bit more of other stuff. Oh, I have a bunch more of these. What am I talking about? <clears throat> I could have done like a whole thing on just Destination Wax. Beechwood Vetiver, Driftwood Carnation, Night Blooming Jasmine, and a bit of seaweed and eucalyptus. All right. This has a weird stinging note to it, like a pungent note. And I think it's the eucalyptus and seaweed coming in because it's like a weird... Like you get the refreshing tone of eucalyptus, but then there's like that weird 
kelpy note. It's not really kelp. I don't know how to describe it, but that I mean, I guess that's what seaweed could be. But um, if you've ever had a seaweed salad at an Asian establishment and you get that weird sort of like marine tone to it, it's that mix with eucalyptus that does something weird to the scent to me. Because I usually like jasmine and driftwood and all that, but then you get those last undertones and they just kind of like pop out and you're like, ah, that's not quite what I was expecting. But again, performs well. All right, then we have Magic in the Air. This is a Bath and Body Works type. Um, I love this fragrance. Uh, almond flower, white iris fruit, and whipped vanilla. It it smells exactly like that. Um, I have I've my luster for Magic is in the air uh, or Magic in the Air as a fragrance has gone down a bit over like the last couple of years. It's like, I enjoy it, but maybe not to the extent of like, oh my God, I must have it all the time. Uh, but this is pretty darn accurate to the fragrance if you are missing that one from Bath and Body Works. Next we have Lavender Black Amber. This is Amber, Lavender, Tonka Bean, Egyptian Musk, Patchouli, Myrrh, and Clary Sage. Oh my gosh. Um, this is a rich, um, like, not quite incense-y sort of lavender, but it's like you get the richness of the amber, the musk note, the Egyptian musk note kind of, and myrrh kind of, and like all of those kind of give you that sort of like market sort of vibe. If you like scents from Scentsy like Amber Road, this is more of like a rich, um, deeper variant on that. Not quite as spicy, a little bit sweeter. This is, this is, this is yummy. This is, is like along the lines of like some companies will do like a black amber and plum sort of thing. This is similar, but then you have the lavender tones to it and then the more incense undertones. So I really like this. It can kind of be a little bit romantic. It's more of like a, if you're not a big incense kind of adjacent fragrance person, you might not like this, but, um, it, it kind of reminds me like if you go into one of those, um, shops where they sell all the crystals and like the different chains and you know um stones and candles and charms and stuff like that it kind of reminds me of that so all right we can get through this this is gonna be a long video sorry guys <clears throat> or maybe not sorry i don't know all right we got a couple more destination wax and then we'll get on to the other stuff um, cocoa butter, cashmere, sweet tonka bean, coconut, jasmine, sandalwood, amber, musk, warm spices, and cocoa butter. This is like a body care, um, cozy body care. It's like you just wrap, lathered yourself up in lotion, after, body cream after your shower, and it's like drying on your skin, and then you wrap up in a blanket, and that's what the scent is. And it's delightful. Um, now lavender stardust, lavender, pink sugar, peppermint, and a touch of vanilla. This is an interesting scent that I'm not entirely in love with. Um, it's basically a van slightly vanilla peppermint, a sweet vanilla peppermint with a touch of lavender in it. So it's like floral meets vanilla peppermint. And I thought I would like those because I usually like all those scent notes. But in this combination, I could take it or leave it. I feel like I like other ones, combinations better. A little too sweet. Next, we have Lavender Lullaby, a sweet blend of lavender, lilac, and mimosa flower. This one didn't really do it for me either. I didn't mind it. You do get the lilac. You do get the, the lavender in there. I'm not really sure what mimosa flower smells like, so I can't really tell you about that, but it's a little bit powdery. It's actually kind of a lot of bit powdery. And you do get all your scent notes, but Again, like, I, I I won't say that this is quite ele elevator wax, but um, I just I just didn't really find it particularly like, oh, wow, I love this scent. Next, we have bamboo and black cedar, bamboo, juniper, black cedar, and champaca flowers. I hope I said that right. This is another one that I was a little bit underwhelmed by. I feel like this one came out more powdery than I wanted. Um, you do get the bamboo tone to this. You do get a cedar tone. I don't know if it's the juniper or if there's like a pepper note to this. 
but something isn't doing it for me. And it kind of, kind of like makes it kind of soapy almost. And I'm not super fond of that in this fragrance. Otherwise, it's a pretty decent one. Um, like I said, they still perform well. I think I have a couple more down there at the bottom. But we're just going to go and order from what I pull out because there's, otherwise we'll be stuck on Destination Wax forever. Carolina Wax Company Vanilla Sandalwood. Again, nice scent. Soft. It is a, it's more of a bakery vanilla, I would say. And I think it's also more vanilla than it is sandalwood from what I remember. But again, it's still a very light brand. So again, if you want something that's not going to overwhelm you, this is the one to go through. Better Homes and Gardens, Sandalwood and Vanilla. Let's go through these. This is more Sandalwood than Vanilla. This is closer to Satin Sheets from Scentsy. Uh, it's a little bit more fresh, if that makes sense. Because um, I guess it's their aromatherapy line. Um, but I didn't really like the Sandalwood tone to this as much as I thought I would. So take that for what you will. But it did perform well. I felt like it was just a little too Sandalwood heavy. So. All right, next we have Yankee Candle number five, Coconut and Vanilla Bean. Again, this is one I melted into wax melts. I adore this fragrance. It is a monster of a scent. And it's such a rich and deep coconut. Oh my goodness. It's And it's Vanilla Bean, and it's like a sultry, romantic fragrance. Oh, so good. It's like this dark brown, rich wax, and it's just, it is... Oh, and it's interesting because some of the, the waxes I melted down and then like turned into wax melts didn't end up performing as well as I'd hoped they would. This candle, oh my God, even just a cube or two of it is just like fills the room and just like, hello. So that is a scent that I do love. And I would, I would even get a candle of that and then just keep turning them to wax melts or something. All right, next we have Colonial Candle Manly Indulgences uh, line Black Tuxedo. This is... Kind of like a fresh, clean man. It's like, um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Sensational Dapper. I think that was what it was called. It's that sort of like fresh, clean cut sort of guy. Lighter cologne vibes. Not so heavy and deep and rich. Um, a little bit more zesty, but not quite bergamot um, from what I remember. It's a nice scent. It could be. It could have bergamot. I feel like that's like a go-to for a lot of manly scents. Let's put some bergamot in and call it a manly scent. All right, um, Loves to Cuddle from Goose Creek. This is just a nice cozy scent. Um, it smells like you're wrapped in a nice, you know, soft blanket. That's about all I can say. It's kind of like along the veins. I wouldn't, it's been a long time since I've smelled it, but it kind of gives me like that fuzzy blanket vibes sort of scent from Scentsy, where it's just like a cozy blanket. Like there's not a whole lot to it other than that. Medium sort of throw. Autumn in Amsterdam. This is a beautiful fragrance. This is like the more refined older brother to Sensational's Autumn Air that I love. Um, and I really enjoy this. This is like a deeper, richer variant on that, but still retains the freshness that I want to smell when I'm in like an autumnal setting. So highly recommend that one if autumn air is your jam or you like autumn air, what it sounded like. Colonial Candle, Manly Indulgences, Midnight. So this is another manly scent. This is a richer, deeper fragrance. Um, how do I describe this? This is more of like a refined gentleman, like businessman, you know, white collar, you know, goes out to fancy dinners, you know, that sort of thing. Deeper, richer sort of cologne scent um, versus a light effervescent sporty scent or anything like that or something spicy. It's more muted. Uh, if you like Scentsy's uh, Ravenclaw, I think it is from the Harry Potter collection, the blue one, it's going to be kind of similar to that a little bit. Like they're on the same wheelhouse. They're not the same fragrance at all whatsoever, but they're very similar in their kind of nods to what they're going for. <clears throat> oh, look, another hazelnut and cream. Dun, 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 dun. Sensational's Boardwalk, Salty Breeze and Sunset Sky. 
Yeah, that's what this kind of smells like, but it also kind of just smells like you you cleaned your carpets and, you know, used a bunch of, like, cleaning products and your house is a little bit salty and a little bit fresh and, you know, I wouldn't go out of my way for that one. Sand Castles from Goose Creek. It does give you, like, a sandy warmth vibe. It's kind of a forgettable scent, but not necessarily in a bad way. It's just a warm, cozy... It does kind of remind me of lying on the beach and getting a tan. There's like... I feel like there's like a little bit of an undertone of coconut or something. I feel like there's coconut in this. It's not quite a sunscreen scent, but it's um, like beach. Maybe a hint of like suntan lotion. But a coconutty undertone. It's it's a nice scent. It's a nice, be nice beachy scent. But it's also a neutral scent, so it's not gonna smack you in the face and bury you in the sand <clears throat> next ocean breeze from goose creek i don't even feel like i should explain this it kind of smells like a salty ocean breeze but um i mean that's what it is i wouldn't say it's particularly authentic but it does give that sort of fresh ozonic quality to it with us while still being salty so it does kind of hit what it's supposed to. I just don't know how I feel it being particularly authentic, especially because I live in California near the ocean. It's not quite the same. Um, big one of fresh orchard apples. This is kind of like a... You know, the more I smell this, this is almost like more of a dupe for apple press from Scentsy than it is Johnny Appleseed because it's not quite as dewy and juicy like, like the pear note in... Johnny Appleseed is. It's almost a little bit more muted, and I feel like that lends itself closer towards Apple Press now that I've warmed it. But they're all almost identical. They're just all slightly differently nuanced. So if you like Johnny Appleseed or Apple Press, this is basically this, about the same. I see light at the end of the tunnel and a million more Destination Wax things. Oh, God. Um, Blood Orange and Kumquat. Uh, this is the premium line from Better Homes and Gardens. I actually really like this scent. It is strong. Uh, they say it's blood orange, sugar tangerine, orange zest, kumquat, mandarin, and cranberry scent notes. This is another tart. Like, if you like cranberry, mandarin, splash, this is kind of like the more sophisticated, longer-lasting, better, better, well, more well-balanced variant on that. It's very similar, though. It's very similar, but it's a little bit more of a muted overall citrus scent. Um, but they did it well, and it lasts all day long. Next, we have Honeysuckle and Mint. This was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, honeysuckle, Jasmine, Mint, Cucumber Water, Garden Cress, and Burden... Garden Grass? Oh, Garden Grass, not Crass. And Bourbon Scent Notes. I like Honeysuckle fragrances. I tend to like mints, especially fresh mint scents. This is like the weird where certain scents just didn't work as well together as they do on their own. And like the, the mint kind of off throws this for me from like being a honeysuckle floral scent or like a dewy floral. And the floral honeysuckle component to it throws it off from being like a fresh clean scent. So it's like that weird hybrid where it doesn't quite know what it wants to do. And it just didn't work for me. But it performed well. I just, I, that one was a womp for me. What was not a womp, actually, the two that weren't womps were lemon balm and cedar. Oh my god, this scent is something else. Lemon, orange, ivy, neruli, jasmine, lemon balm, sandalwood, cedar, wood, and musk. There's a whole, you know, kitchen sink of scents in here. That being said, what you really smell is a lovely lemon orange balm or a lemon orange overtone, and then you get like that cedar woodsy undertone. And that's really what comes through when you warm it. All this other stuff, neroli, ivy, jasmine, sandalwood, like I don't know where they're coming with that stuff. But it's like lemon and orange and cedar are like the prominent what you smell. And it lasts. And it's not a smacking in the face, but it's definitely a medium strong performer. I really like this one. That one I would get more of. <clears throat> Another one I would really get more of is pumpkin and pistachio. Um, this one, pumpkin puree, salted pistachio, apple butter, almond milk, creme brulee, and brown sugar scent note. So, this reminds me of a, this is probably the closest fragrance I have found yet 
to Sensi's pistachio ice cream. They, there was at one point like a pistachio macaroon scent from Better Homes and Gardens or Sensationals, one of the two, that was close. This comes a lot closer. This is a bit creamier. It's not ice cream though. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be pistachio ice cream. So just don't get your hopes up there. But it has a similar sort of pistachio tone to it, and it's creamier than the macaroon one that they had once upon a time. Probably because of the almond milk, almond milk and the creme brulee notes. Um, which kind of balance it out from being quite as dry. And I think that's really what is its redeeming grace because it's, I, again, not a huge pumpkin person. Pistachio, it doesn't matter either way. I don't mind. But this is an actually really nice, solid, balanced fragrance. So if you can find this still, I would try getting it if you like pistachio scents. Because you will get the pistachio note. All right, we're over to the hour mark by like five minutes. Let's see if we can wrap this up. Sorry, guys. Oh, God. Cabin in the Woods, Goose Creek. This is a cabin in the woods. It's a green, woodsy sort of scent. There's a little bit of a, a freshness to this that you wouldn't get in, say, let's say, Rustic Lodge. So this is more like in between Sensi's Rustic Lodge and Route 66. It's like in between those two, or it's not quite one, but it's not quite the other. It's not quite as fresh as one, but not quite as dark and brooding as the other one. I don't think that's the word I was looking for, but cool. But it is a cabin. Ask It gives you that, that sort of vibe that you are out in a woodsy cabin. A woodsy cabin in the woods as opposed to what? A plastic cabin in the woods? Um, it, it, it works. It, it gives you the, the sense that you're, you're expecting. Eskimo Kisses is next. This is, again, this is another cozy scent. I feel like they have five or six different cuddly scents, like Eskimo Kisses and Cuddle Me Up and Stay at Home and all this stuff. And they all kind of smell the same. They have slight nuances. I'll give them that. They're they're different. For, well, I think they're different formulas. Um, they all have some sort of different scent note to them. But generally speaking, as a whole, they all like feel like could fit in the same blanket category, but um of like a Cozy Vibes fragrance. Um, and they're not bad, it's just, I don't know why you have like seven fragrances that are virtually the same and virtually the same color wax with different packaging. Like, I feel like it's a marketing ploy. But what do I know? Tell me I'm wrong. Goose Creek Pure White Sands. This is a beautiful scent. Just kidding, it's elevator wax. Um, <laughs> Again, I would say that Sand Castle, I think, is the other one that we talked about earlier. That one is more beachy and more authentic. This is kind of just like a slightly sand, nuanced, clean, neutral scent that could go in the background of your house and no one would be the wiser. And they would just be like, oh, your house smells clean and something. And they no one could quite place it. And you'd be like, it's pure white sands, my darling. All right. Sailboats. This does not smell like a sailboat to me. It is a little bit aquatic. There is a, like, I feel like a bergamot-y sort of adjacent note or lime or something like that. I'd have to look at the scent notes to tell you. It's been a while. I honestly don't remember the scent, but I vaguely remember it just being like another aquatic, fresh kind of scent thing. I don't know. I, I feel like... Not to sound like scent jaded or anything, but after a while when you smell the same scent or something very similar to the same scent as you have before, you're just kind of like, oh, I've smelled this umpteen times and slightly different variants and they all still smell kind of the same. And I'm kind of maybe waiting for like that aquatic -y scent that breaks the mold and really makes me go, wow, that's different. Um, I feel like a lot of them just kind of play it safe especially when it comes to ocean scents. They're all kind of like sort of same. This is Oak and Rye's Oceanside, speaking of. And this kind of smells like zesty body wash. And the and like in being in the bathtub with body wash. It's like soapy, fresh. I don't know. I'm, I'm not impressed. Again, it's just, it doesn't, it's not that it's a bad fragrance, but it just doesn't feel like anything. Um, different per se. 
And that's fair. A lot of companies will have their sort of like base generic fragrances that everyone tends to like, like their version of a vanilla and their version of a cozy home and their version of a baking spices and their version of a cookie scent, you know, like everyone kind of has that. And then they try to get a little bit more creative after that. All right. Sensational's cashmere cream is next. We got to wrap this up soon because otherwise you will be sick of listening to me prattle on. This one I thought I was going to not like, and then I ended up liking it, but then I ended up being like, but I don't like it that much. So there is a weird, rich creaminess to this sort of cozy scent. And at first it really works and it makes it different. I will say that much from like your standard cozy cardigan kind of vibe scent, you know, or, or cuddle up cashmere bathrobe scent or whatever. Like the cream note definitely makes something different out of it. I just don't know if it does what I would like it to do. Um, and over the course of its warming, it kind of like, I have mixed feelings on that one. So I don't know. I'll maybe I'll have to pick up a bar, try to find another one and warm it again. But just on prelim, I was kind of like, eh, not so sure about this. This one, Better Homes and Gardens, Bergamot and Sage is just like what it is. Shocking, I know. But it's a clean, f zesty, fresh citrus scent, um, with sage kind of limey because that's what bergamot tends to smell like i wouldn't be surprised if they put some lime in there as well but um yeah that's a pretty simple scent nice clean scent if you want something to air out the house cactus and sandalwood from better homes and gardens this is cactus blossoms pear melon golden apple juniper berry and sandalwood this one i actually really liked um it kind of gives me prickly pear cactus vibes like it's a fresh sort of dewy cactus but then you have the earthy undertones it is more of a fresh scent than necessarily a woodsy scent in my opinion which is not a bad thing and it could it could honestly be a spa scent you could use it as like a spa scent it is clean I feel like it's because you have like the pear and the melon and the cactus blossom and the app golden apple which is not like such a sweet like red apple would be but those all give you that dewy, aquatic, like, goodness. And then you have, like, a hint of a juniper berry. And then you have sandalwood as the undertone. But it's not, like, heavily sandalwood. I feel like it's more on the spa, aquatic side. I don't I like the scent. I thought it was a really nice scent for the house. Or I should say apartment. All right, let's see. Can we get this all done? We have... All the rest left are destination wax. So let's kind of smoke through these. Speaking of, first one is called smoked vanilla. Ha ha. Smoked Tahitian vanilla, amber, sandalwood, leather, clove, musk, and a shot of bourbon. This is a bath and body work scent. Uh, I don't feel like I like this as much. It's like a smoky, sweet vanilla. I think the bourbon sweetened it a little too much for me. Um, but if you like this fragrance from Bath and Body Works, I'm assuming it's going to smell fairly similar to that. Because most of their other type fragrances are, like, spot on. So, just realized I didn't really like that one. Um, Fierce. This is the Abercrombie Fierce Cologne scent. And, yes, yes, it does smell like that. And I was very impressed. And I was very happy to have my place smell not, like, quite as pungently, but as a Abercrombie store. So, my life was complete. Um, Thai Temple Garden, Dark Roses, Incense, Aromatic, Sandalwood, Mingling with Ancient Mossy Statues. This is another incense -y scent. So if you like things like Amber Road, or you like going to, um, some of those, like, Zen garden-y sort of things where it's, like, very, like, they have incense going, and then you go into, like, the little rooms and whatever. This is a very incense kind of scent, but there is a freshness to it because it's, like, the garden outside as well. Um... I like this, but it is a heavier scent. Just be mindful of that. So if you have a small room, don't go crazy if you start warming it. Unless you want your room to smell like super heavy. Um, lavender Twilight. Sweet Lavender, Lilac, Tonka Bean, and Ylang Ylang compared to Lush Twilight. Um, I don't remember what Lush Twilight smells like, to be very honest. But if I had to smell this and compare it, I would say, yes, this does smell like something that Lush would come out with. I actually really like this scent. 
I think it's well balanced. I think it's not overly powdery. Kind of has a bit of a soapy tone to it, but there's also a there's a little bit of a rich like a creaminess to it that kind of mellows it. I don't know. I really like this one. So the the story is really short and quick is for all these lavender ones is that I um, was trying to test out all the different lavenders at one point. Oh, there's the thing. I was like, where did that one go? Sweater weather. Anyway, so I got a bunch of their lavender scents to see which ones I liked better or what the different lavenders smelled like. Sweater weather is juniper berry, eucalyptus, sage, and lingering mint. It's a Bath and Body Works type, and yes, it does kind of smell like that one, and I'm not a huge fan of that one, I've realized. So, that's okay. Marshmallow fluff, sweet, creamy marshmallow fluff. It's it smells like marshmallow fluff. There's a vanilla tone to this, but it is literally like if you opened a can of marshmallow fluff. That's what this kind of smells like with more of a vanilla tone to it. Very simple scent, but it works. Boardwalk Marshmallow Clouds. Uh, this is a Bath & Body Works inspired scent. Marshmallow Perfume, Marshmallow Meringue, White Magnolia, Sandalwood, and Vanilla. This is a slightly floral, sweet, perfumey scent. Um, I don't know if it's what it's exactly inspired from, from Bath & Body Works. Maybe the actual, that's what it's called. Um, I don't love it as much as some of the other ones, but that's just because I find it's a little bit sweeter than I'd like for a floral to be all the time. And it gets a little bit like cloying at times, but that's okay. That's okay. It's still done quite well. All right, Swedish Dream Salt. Salty Sea Breeze, Cucumber, Oak Moss, Lavender, Balsam, and Lime. Oh yeah, I didn't really like this one. This kind of smells like carpet cleaner for Breeze, but with like a lime note. It's, uh, or like by the sea with like a lime note or something from Scentsy. It's like if you took cucumber lime and mixed it with by the sea, you'd probably get something similar to this or cucumber lime with ocean breeze or whatever it you'd get something of the sort not not really my my style all right we got final four let's do this um vanilla snowflake creamy vanilla warm wood sweetened with a dash of coconut that is a um bath and body works type and it it's my biggest gripe okay so here's my biggest gripe with a lot of these vanilla based scents from destination wax and it could be just the ones that I specifically picked all have that same sort of smell, which is entirely plausible. But I will say that I feel like their vanilla tone, at least in the, this round of ones that I was warming through, all was from the similar sort of vanilla basis and then things were added. Again, I could be completely wrong, but they all had a very similar vanilla overtone. So you could take that for the fact that I probably picked them all and they were probably like the ones that I thought sounded pretty good. So that's maybe why they all kind of smell similar. But um, some of them, it was almost a little difficult to determine if they were something different than the other one. Like, like what was so different from this one to this one? Mm, not a whole lot. All right. Destination... Wax hit the road jack, sweet patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, black pepper, citrus compared to Lord of Misrule as a fragrance. This is interesting and you do get the black pepper. This was a very peppery patchouli sort of scent. Um, I didn't mind it and I'm not like a huge patchouli person. Um, definitely sort of like a cologne vibe. It was a, a very interesting warming. Um, I will be mindful of black pepper scents in future because sometimes they can get a little bit overwhelming. Um, all right, Lavender Tassie, clean lavender similar to Tasmanian Lavender Essential Oil. I actually really like this one. This is probably one of my favorite lavenders that I smelled. And if that's what the Tasmanian Lavender Essential Oil smells like, that's probably the one I'm going to like the most to try to hunt down. Um, it's a cleaner, sort of fresh lavender. If that makes sense, not like if you imagine like a cleaning product, it's not gonna, that's not really gonna make it sense either. But, like a clean breeze and then lavender, like a fresh lavender, like mixed together. That's what you get. It's almost like an ozonic lavender, I wanna say. It's a little sweeter and less heavy than most lavenders that I've smelled. So, 
I don't know, I'm describing this poorly, but check out um, a Tasmanian lavender sort of base scent if you're curious to what I'm babbling about terribly. And the last one is that man, me, I'm just kidding. Spicy and fresh manly stuff, leather, tobacco, musk, cedar wood, teak wood, sandalwood, and black pepper. Yeah, this is a very heavy, peppery, woodsy, um, manly scent as it describes. And it's good. Uh, I liked it. I wouldn't necessarily run to the store to get tons of it. Um, but it, it checks all those boxes. You get all of that. It's a very like masculine, um, rich, deeper scent with a hint of freshness and a hint of spiciness to it. That black pepper really does come through. So I'd mentioned earlier, their, their black pepper notes are they're there for like, you can smell them. They're not hiding from you. So anyways, that, oh my goodness, that is the end and conclusion of this part of my fragrance feedback. That is all of the nonsensey stuff I've worn since mid-December, I think. Good grief. So um, hopefully this was informative or funny or entertaining or all of the above. Let me know if you've smelled any of these before or warmed any of these and you have any thoughts on them. Um, and if you're new here, consider subscribing. I will be doing a part two eventually that will have the, uh, all the Scentsy stuff. There's a mountain just about as big, but it's of Scentsy wax. So hopefully I can get through this a little quicker. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, consider subscribing if you're new here, like I said earlier, and I will see you guys in our next video. Take care. Bye.